Pakistan is drowning and the evidence is everywhere you look. While the world debates carbon emissions and temperature targets, Pakistan is living through a climate nightmare that's unfolding in real time. Heavy monsoon rains and flash floods have killed at least 739 people across Pakistan since late June, transforming what should be nature's blessing into nature's curse. Streets that once bustled with life are now rivers of destruction. In Karachi alone, a massive port city of 20 million people, entire neighborhoods have been completely submerged under torrents of water. Beauty parlors, shops, homes, all blocked off by floodwaters, with low-hanging electrical wires creating death traps in the murky water below. The 2025 monsoon season has brought devastation on a scale that's hard to comprehend. Nearly 750 people have died since this year's monsoon began and we're still weeks away from the season's end. According to the National Disaster Agency, the intensity of this year's monsoon, vital for agriculture, is about 50 to 60% higher than last year. This isn't just bad weather anymore. This is weather on steroids, supercharged by a rapidly changing climate that's spinning out of control. The human stories emerging from this disaster reveal the true horror of what's happening. Children are sleeping under open skies with no protection from the rain. This neighborhood in Lahore has been completely inundated. Beauty parlors, shops, entrances completely blocked off. You'll see some of the wires have dropped very low. Some of them are in the water now. The power, electricity have been completely cut off to the neighborhood. Families who once had homes, livestock, and livelihoods now have nothing but the clothes on their backs. In relief, camps across the affected regions, the situation is desperate. A mother cradles her infant with no milk to offer, no food to give. Fathers watch helplessly as their children develop severe skin infections from contaminated flood water with no medicine available to treat them. One flood victim's testimony captures the complete devastation. Everything either got washed away or what remained is now useless. A daughter's trousseau, carefully saved for years, destroyed in minutes. Furniture broken, belongings scattered, memories erased. A 15-year-old child who went with cattle to higher ground, only to be swept away by the merciless waters. These aren't just statistics. These are lives torn apart, futures destroyed, families shattered. But here's what makes Pakistan's situation truly terrifying. The country is caught in a perfect storm of geography, poverty, and climate change. Pakistan sits at the crossroads of some of the world's most extreme weather systems. The Hindu Kush, Himalayan, and Karakoram mountain ranges converge in its northern regions, creating a landscape that's both breathtakingly beautiful and incredibly dangerous. The worst hit province is Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, where 425 deaths have been recorded, followed by 164 in Punjab. In one of the deadliest incidents, 24 people from one family died in the village of Kadar Nagar when floodwaters swept through their home on the eve of a wedding. Think about that for a moment. A family preparing to celebrate love and new beginnings, and in a matter of hours, nearly the entire family is gone. The scale of destruction defies comprehension. We're talking about 1,176 buildings damaged or destroyed, including 562 that were completely obliterated in districts like Swat, Abbottabad, Charsada, Malakan, Shangla, Lower Deer, and Torgar. The province of Punjab has suffered extensive flooding along the Indus and Chenab rivers, displacing more than 2,300 families and destroying cash crops across thousands of acres. Survivors describe scenes that sound like doomsday itself. Some took shelter on rooftops while others had to climb trees to survive. Families trapped for four days, surviving on nothing but roasted raw corn. No flour, no water, no fire to cook with. They watched as everything they'd built over lifetimes disappeared beneath the churning waters. The rescue efforts show both heroism and heartbreak. 
Pakistan's army, police, and rescue services have mobilized over 2,000 personnel for rescue and evacuation operations. They're using helicopters, boats, even drone cameras with thermal imaging to spot people trapped in the floods. The chief minister herself acknowledged that livestock represents entire livelihoods. Teams are not just rescuing people, but also trying to save the cattle and animals that represent families' only source of income. But the immediate flooding is just part of the nightmare. Pakistan is now facing a new type of disaster that most people have never even heard of. Glacial Lake, Outburst Floods, or Gelofs. These are nature's version of a dam burst, but infinitely more unpredictable and devastating. Pakistan has the largest volume of glacial ice for any country outside polar regions. And when those glaciers start melting faster than ever before, the consequences are catastrophic. A glacial lake outburst flood destroyed over 300 homes in Pakistan's Gilgit-Baltistan region on August 22, 2025, forcing hundreds to evacuate in at least six villages. The glacier burst triggered heavy debris flow and a major river blockage, leading to the rapid formation of an artificial lake extending over seven kilometers in length. Imagine waking up to find that a seven-kilometer lake has suddenly appeared overnight, swallowing everything in its path. Mehdi, a flood survivor, shared his harrowing experience. We knew what was coming because of how loud the clanking of the rocks was, and the water stream stopped. We had just enough time to make it to a higher elevation and save ourselves. But all our life savings, home, livestock, it's all gone, wiped out in a few moments. Yet amid the darkness, there are glimpses of heroism. In Roshan village, a local shepherd noticed signs of an imminent flood while tending cattle early one morning. Using just his mobile phone, he alerted residents minutes before floodwater surged through the settlement, prompting a mass evacuation that saved the entire population. This shepherd, with nothing but his knowledge of the land and a mobile phone, saved hundreds of lives when expensive early warning systems failed. The science behind this catastrophe is alarming. Rising temperatures are supercharging the water cycle. Warmer air holds more moisture, which means when it rains, it pours with unprecedented intensity. The International Center for Integrated Mountain Development found that Hindu Kush and Himalayan glaciers Disapi arred 65% faster in the 2011-2020 period than in the previous decade. Climate expert Dawar Hamid Butt explains the vicious cycle. Higher temperatures accelerate glacier melt, which exposes darker rocky surfaces. These surfaces in turn absorb more heat, further speeding up the melting process. We are now witnessing these feedback loops unfold. It's a runaway train of climate destruction that's gaining speed every year. The numbers paint a terrifying picture. Due to rising temperatures, glaciers in Pakistan's northern mountain ranges have created 3,044 glacial lakes in Gilgit-Baltistan and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. Of these, 33 have been assessed as prone to hazardous glacial lake outburst flooding. Think about that, 33 ticking time bombs scattered across Pakistan's northern mountains, each capable of unleashing millions of cubic meters of water and debris without warning. The current crisis shows no signs of abating. Water is flowing at an unprecedented 385,000 cusecs at critical points. Rivers like the Chenab are carrying 855,000 cusecs of water, volumes that existing infrastructure simply cannot handle. Authorities have been for said to create controlled breaches and embankments, sacrificing rural areas to save cities, but even these desperate measures may not be enough. But here's what makes Pakistan's situation uniquely tragic. Although it produces less than 1% of global greenhouse gas emissions, the country faces recurring heat waves, heavy rains, glacial lake outburst floods, and sudden cloud bursts that can devastate communities within hours. This is climate injustice in its purest form, the poorest and most vulnerable paying the ultimate price for the emissions of the richest nations. The economic devastation compounds the human tragedy. In 2022, unprecedented floods killed more than 1,700 people, displaced millions, and caused an estimated $40 billion in economic losses. Roughly 12% of Pakistan's entire GDP wiped out in a single monsoon season. The main sources of livelihood, agriculture, horticulture, and tourism, have suffered greatly as floods destroyed large tracts of agricultural land, 
while damaged irrigation channels continue to affect even areas that weren't directly hit. The humanitarian crisis extends far beyond immediate deaths and injuries. More than one million people are affected nationwide. Many families are sheltering with host communities rather than in relief camps, citing concerns over livestock and schooling. Health workers report surges in malaria, fever, and skin infections, stretching already fragile health services to breaking point. Children bear a particularly heavy burden. Medical workers at relief camps report that children are terrified, unable to sleep at night due to fear. An entire generation is growing up traumatized, knowing that the rains that should bring life and prosperity could instead bring death and destruction at any moment. As rescue teams work around the clock, having saved 1,594 people across Pakistan in flood and rain emergencies, the lack of proper early warning systems remains a critical failure. Muhammad Iqbal, a schoolteacher in Pir Baba village, stated plainly, survivors escaped with nothing. If people had been informed earlier, lives could have been saved and residents could have moved to safer places. The failure of expensive early warning devices has reignited debate over Pakistan's disaster preparedness. When high-tech systems fail, survival often depends on local knowledge and quick thinking, like that shepherd who saved an entire village with nothing but his understanding of the land and a mobile phone. Looking ahead, the forecast is grim. Authorities warn the current rains may last until mid-September, with more deluges and possible landslides expected. The immediate crisis is far from over, but the long-term outlook is even more concerning. Experts say climate change is intensifying the frequency and severity of such extreme weather events in South Asia. What we're seeing in Pakistan isn't a one-off disaster, it's the new normal. Erratic and intensified rainfall patterns, ample, eyefied by climate change, are compounding the country's vulnerability, threatening lives, livelihoods, and long-term recovery across Southern Asia. Pakistan is ranked among the most climate-vulnerable countries in the world, facing frequent glacial melts, flash floods, and heat extremes. In 2022, unprecedented monsoon floods submerged one-third of the country, killing more than 1,700 people and displacing millions. One-third of an entire country underwater. Let that sink in. This isn't just Pakistan's problem. It's a preview of what climate change looks like when it hits full force. Pakistan, home to over 220 million people, more than the populations of the UK, France, and Germany combined, is becoming increasingly uninhabitable. The consequences will ripple across the globe through migra, tie-in, economic disruption, and geopolitical instability. The tragedy is that much of this suffering could be prevented with better preparation, early warning systems, and global action on climate change. But as the current crisis shows, we're not moving fast enough. While world leaders debate emission targets and climate finance, people in Pakistan are dying from floods that grow worse each year. Pakistan's monsoon catastrophe is a wake-up call that we can't afford to ignore. The country that contributes less than 1% of global emissions is paying the ultimate price for the world's carbon addiction. The question isn't whether climate change is real, the bodies floating in Pakistan's floodwaters have already answered that. The question is whether the rest of the world will wake up before it. It's too late. Every day of delay in addressing climate change means more families losing everything, more children growing up in fear, and more communities being wiped off the map by forces beyond their control. Pakistan's experience is a warning for the rest of the world. Climate change doesn't respect borders, and the extreme weather patterns devastating Pakistan today could be coming to other regions tomorrow. The monsoons that have sustained South Asian civilizations for millennia are becoming weapons of mass destruction, transformed by global warming that we're all contributing to. The human cost of climate change isn't some abstract future threat. It's happening right now, in real time, in Pakistan. Thanks for watching. If you want to understand how climate change is reshaping WETH, or patterns across the globe, check out our other videos on extreme weather events. And if you want to stay updated on the latest climate disasters and their global implications, be sure to subscribe for more in-depth coverage of the climate crisis that's already here.